Hi, I'm George Dory, and welcome to our Coast to Coast AM YouTube channel. Have fun, tell your friends, and share us with everyone. You can also find us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, and Coast to Coast AM's mobile app. And always remember to log on to our website at coasttocoastam.com for daily articles, the best paranormal information, and all you need to know about your favorite guests. And now you can become a Coast Insider directly through the Coast mobile app. We welcome our international listeners and even offer a free two-week trial. So don't delay. Become an insider today. You're listening to Coast to Coast AM. Hello there. Connie Willis here. Right now, we've got a couple of people that lived in a certain area for a while, uh, 10 years. And every night for 10 years, they had a Bigfoot right there in their front yard, backyard, right there happening with them every night. So we're going to learn a little bit more about that. Uh, you guys know that I'm into the Bigfoot big time. I'm into all of them across the board, but the most fun and the most interesting is the Bigfoot. It's just the way it is. It's the one that you can have a relationship. It's the one that you can talk with. It's the one that they want to talk with you and they they want to have a relationship with you. They do, whether, you, whether you're uh, crazy about them in love or you're cra- you, you want to run from them. I know there's different People have different situations that happen, and so we're going to get all sides of people, and I think you might get a different one tonight. So let's see how that goes. Now, they're not going to tell their their names uh, or where the actual city or town was or the area that it was because it was deep in the woods, but they're not, they're not going to tell you those things. They still want to be very, very private. This happened a while back. They have since moved from this area, and... They want to keep their privacy. Just keep in mind, you know, everybody has their story. Let them tell their stories. Let them tell you how they felt and what what they did. You know, let's just see about tonight. All right. So Elaine and Sierra, welcome to Coast to Coast AM. It's very nice to have you here. Thank you. So Elaine, tell me where all this started. I mean, apparently, I think you were in Hawaii before. No, it started before uh, we went to Hawaii. And oh. uh, let's see, it was the first thing I was thinking earlier, and I thought, well, I better go to the beginning. And I thought, well, okay. back, back, back. And so uh, Sierra was in kindergarten, and uh, I went to pick him up from school. And uh, at this point in time, I really wasn't aware of Bigfoot, didn't pay much attention to him at all, and didn't know him in any kind of way. And uh, so anyway, I picked up Sierra and was coming home. We turned off the highway and onto a dirt road that we traveled quite frequently. And uh, we topped the first hill, and Sierra was standing up in the seat. So we saw this creature. He leaped across the fence and made a few steps across the road, jumped the other fence, and disappeared into the forest. Sierra said, wow, did you see that? (laughs) So he must have scared us because we didn't stop to look at any footprints and uh another unusual thing a lot of people don't believe this but um he had on a shirt uh, it looked like a <laughs> it looked like a blue checkered flannel shirt i i know it sounds crazy but what state what was I, this in what state was this down there in east texas see this has happened before we went to hawaii Oh, we, lived in, oh. we lived in East Texas, and then we went to Hawaii, and then we came back to East Texas, didn't know where to go right off the bat, and so oh, okay. we went back to the same area we were. But this happened the very first time that I got introduced to a Bigfoot. Oh, I got and that's you. how that happened. And okay. he started hanging. I started paying attention after that, and uh, there were a lot of things that went on in our country neighborhood that we started noticing. And uh, the next time I had an encounter with him, uh, my dear husband at that time was working nights at a college, and he wasn't—he didn't get home till late at night. And so the dogs barking, 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 barking all night and all night. I was so tired of the dogs barking, and they were in a kennel up on the hill from the house. So about 2 o'clock in the morning, I just decided I've had it. I'm going to go let the dogs out. And so I... It was pretty chilly that night. I put on my robe and shoes, went out the back door, walked up to the gate, went in the gate, and took about 10 steps, and I heard that terrible blood-curdling scream, holler mixture of just 
strangeness that you know something's mad. And sure enough, uh, I thought, well, should I go ahead and let the dogs out or go back to the house? But I went and let the dogs out. They passed me, ran in the back door under the bed. <laughs> I ran in and shut the door, and that was that for the night. So that was my second encounter down there. When you, know what, you know what? Going back to the flannel shirt, the blue flannel yeah. checkered shirt, um, yeah. there have been reports of people uh, also seeing clothes uh, boots, uh, armor, uh, sashes, uh, shirts, shorts, oh. all sorts of different things. So you're <laughs> not the only one I've ever heard that from. So I think that's very interesting. Yeah. I, I guess he doesn't wear it all the time, but maybe he does. But that's the only time I saw a Bigfoot that had a shirt on. <laughs> we had somebody <laughs> that saw a dog man with the uh, pants, like shorts on or like, yeah, like Bermuda shorts or something like that, where they it looked like they had broken open, kind of like the werewolf when the man would turn into the werewolf and, you know, the clothes would tear well, and rip up. Right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, interesting, you know, huh? I've always felt like, uh, you know, uh, honesty is a lot scarier than fiction in yes. my book. Yes, I agree. I agree. So the house that you lived in is two houses mm -hmm. now because uh -huh. you were in East Texas before, then moved to Hawaii, then you came back. But in the house where you were visited every night for a uh -huh. decade, it was it uh -huh. was it out in deep into was, the woods what was the was terrain down the like road from that first house we lived in about eight miles and it was off the road in a very rural area and it was surrounded by a uh, forest and but there were some neighbors you know within maybe you know, 300 yards or something like that there weren't anybody close but there were some people around but it was wooded it, you were it yeah, was heavily wooded it was heav yeah it was the beginning of the not the big ticket but it was close to it was there anything else in the area, or was it just woods? Was there any what What was the industry around, or is it just just it out in the old, middle of nowhere? Yeah, it was. There was all, back in that. Uh, oh. Well, it was all well country, and there were you know all do, people workers doing all field work down there. That's about it. And farmers. That's about all it was. Did you have like a stream around you, or a creek, or a river, or any type yeah. of water? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there was a creek about. 200 yards from our property. Do you think that that was like in a, a pathway of one or you just moved into an area where one or a family or a clan lived? They were all around down there because at night I could, I heard them hollering to each other and answering back. Mm. And that one would holler and another one would answer back and all around us. So they were there. Did, was there, there just time. was there just one that was the no, one that kept looking in all the of, time? No, there, I only saw the first one that had the shirt on, and then the big white one that came uh, to the second house, and uh, yeah, and he had a son that I saw one night. But I'll tell you all those stories later. Yeah. So the white one was the one that hung around your second house all the time. Yeah. So you had one that was always like, "Hey, what are y'all doing? I'm gonna look in the window. I'm gonna, I'm gonna come up to the." You want me to, to tell you place. how we had the uh, face to face encounter? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I we had just come back from Hawaii and we moved down there, bought an old fixer upper house, and it was a real fixer upper too. And like I said, we didn't have any neighbors, and uh, I had brought some lion head rabbits with me and some uh, my German Shepherd and some cats and um, we had a barn and I would go out every night to the barn to work with the rabbits clean their cages and uh, I sold uh, sold them for show rabbits and uh, I was still in, in that Hawaiian mode you know I walked around the short shorts on and all suntanned <laughs> and a lot of energy and coming and going and uh, one night um, I, well, one morning, actually, I went out to the barn and the rabbits were all uh, out of their cages and running around. And I told Sierra, I said, well, that's kind of weird. And uh, so we started listening, you know, and we were watching uh, TV that next night and something hit the house real hard. And we looked at each other and took out running out the back door. And 
I see her had a million candle powered uh, flashlight. And so we stood in the back and shined the light across the field. And the gray, it was September 17th. For some reason, it stuck in my mind. I guess I told myself to remember that. But anyway, the grass was real high. And uh, he shined the light across the acres there, and there was nothing. We saw nothing. He shined it all around, saw nothing to the side. So he said, Mother, I'm going to go to the front and look at my truck, see if it's okay. We didn't know what we heard. So he took off and went to the front, and the German shepherd, Alicia, went with him. So I'm leaning up against our Ford Ranger, looking towards the north, and um, all of a sudden, slowly, but about 12 feet from me, this the creature just started coming up out of the out of the uh, grass, and he just kept coming up, 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 and he just kept getting bigger and bigger. And I was just like scared to death. I just stood there, and all I could say was, "Oh my God, what is this?" I couldn't scream, I couldn't run, I couldn't do anything. And he was so tall, and he was light color. I don't know if he was white or blonde or what, but he was light color, and the moon was there, and I could see him uh, with the moon shining down on him. And he just stood there and looked at me, and uh, he turned around after a few seconds and ran off into the darkness and across the pasture. And uh, I could hear the horses on the way across from us at we're running and dogs started barking. Sierra comes back from the front and I said, it's him. And Sierra said, it's who? <laughs> and I, I was just still, you know, it's just my first time to really have a close encounter with one of them. So that was the beginning of the encounters. That was back in 2007. <clears throat> so you looked each other in the eye. Yeah. You know how you can see somebody's soul that way. What did you see? in their eye was well, there was, was there any i had been getting all these different vibes when we moved there and i uh, i naturally was afraid and all throughout the 10 years that we lived there and all the different encounters i had i always was scared but he he never warned i don't think he ever wanted to hurt me and uh, he showed his anger plenty of times but and, and he even tried to talk with me or communicate with me, and I never had the courage to go out where I knew he was and get close enough to him. I quit going out in the field at night and in the backyard at night. And, but I felt like if he wanted to hurt us, he would, even though I put plywood over the windows because he would look through all the windows and doors every night, and, you know, he didn't have anything else to do. But every it's night, scary wow. you know, I thought maybe there was somebody out there because I paint, I'm a painter, an artist, and I sit by, I was sitting by the windows at night painting, and I thought, I know somebody's looking at me. <laughs> I can just feel it, you know. And I'd open the door and look outside, but I could never see anything. And you won't see them unless they yeah. want you to see them or it's an accident. Yeah, you know, they are so curious. Um, yeah, you this know, one was did, smart. And highly advanced, absolutely highly advanced. Yeah. Yeah, so one this one I really. A, I had a Go camera ahead. in my hand, and he knew it was a camera. Yeah. And, yeah. and he knew electricity, and he would unplug lights, and he would crush light bulbs, and he would unplug computers. And it was just a constant thing. Every night something would happen, and every morning I would go out just to see what he had done and every night he usually left a scat behind in the walkway or driveway and there was something moved around or something he didn't he showed his you know he showed himself there every day he left a little present for mama <laughs> yeah that was his calling card <laughs> <laughs> you know you know how many people go out and try to find bigfoot scat and you were, you're like being gifted that every night <laughs> <laughs> Elaine and Sierra with us tonight talking about that they were uh, for 10 years living in a home that was visited every night by Bigfoot. And it sounds like it was more than one that but one in specific would come in and check them out from, you know, every night. But Elaine, before we took the break, you were talking about the Bigfoot scat that was left as little gifts for you. And you had put uh, put a whole lot in the freezer and you actually sold some. So the big question is, what was the highest amount of money somebody paid for for some Bigfoot scat? It was $50 for 
two inches. You like slice it for them and go, okay, two inches here, <laughs> like a block yeah, of gold. I did. They were in Canada, too. They bought it in Canada. Oh. But I oh. had known uh, Dr. Ketchum, and she was doing, uh, trying to, I believe, um, developing DNA testing for Bigfoot. And uh, I knew that if it was tested in any kind of way, that it would, you know, it would pass. But I don't think at that time they, it was well known that you could have uh, Bigfoot sketch DNA tested. Did anything come from any of that, giving it away or or no. anybody doing yeah, any they testing? They told me I couldn't sell that online. <laughs> They, <laughs> you're like, I'm going to sell this online. Why not? Anything else can be sold. Why would no, that not? You can't, sell, you can't sell any kind of stuff like that online anywhere. No waste. Like I poop guess. and stuff. You can't sell it. Oh, okay. <laughs> I've never looked into it. I, 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 yeah, I'm so sorry. You're, you're probably, I, I believe you for sure. I can understand that one. Oh my gosh. I never even thought of it or took it that far, but that's excellent. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, if you still had it, you could go to conferences and you could do it there. Uh, the only oh, yeah. reason, by the way, that I know I can laugh about these things that you talk about and you can laugh and stay lighthearted is because uh, I know these things, Bigfoot, are real. And so when this type of stuff happens to you and you're around them, it is nerve wracking. It can be. Some people, it's not at all, but it can be. And, you know, you got to laugh or you're just going to freak out. At least that's me. Well, I freaked out quite often. <laughs> but <laughs> but uh, Sierra had some stories about uh, some of our neighbors that uh and Bigfoot would go and do stuff. Sierra, you want to step in? And yeah, let's let's listen to Sierra. So, uh, Sierra, welcome to Coast to Coast. It's nice to have you here. You were living with your mom. It was just you two back in uh, East Texas. And for that 10 years, you were dealing with this with your mom. How old were you at the time when you were living there at the house? Oh, I guess, what, 36? So from 06 to 2016, and there was something that happened every single day. Yeah, day and you had it day and night. It wasn't just nighttime. Yeah, it would be. There are certain times of the day that it that it occurs, and my friends would come over and like they would hang out to the end end of the afternoon. Afternoon would come, and like sunset would come, and the sounds and after in the forest would start, and they'd be like, "That's it, I gotta go." I'm like, "Man, come on, you get to go home. I Stay live here. Me. I live yeah. here." You know, and it was like that, like every other night. You know, every night they'd come out, and hang out, and then, that's it. I gotta go. I gotta go. And I... so everybody knew this is what happened at your they house. They it for themselves. So yeah, everybody did any... pretty much heard to the grapevine. Did the other neighbors have any problems? I don't know about problems, or I don't know what kind of experiences they had because they were closer to the noise. So when it would break loose, like the the recordings that I gave to you to hear, the, like those sorts of sounds, when those would occur, I know yeah. they would hear it. Yeah, yeah. Me too. The neighbors they didn't want to accept anything. But I told one neighbor, and she started shivering. And then I was talking to the other neighbor, and she said, "You know, I heard something whistling at me. No, growling at me the other morning when I was out in the garden, and I thought, yeah, I know." So those things did happen. But but it seemed to be that they really like looking in at you. Yeah, they were. He liked me a little bit too much, and it kind of made me feel funny. Because that's normal. Yeah, usually they go for the female in the house, and they watch her all the time. Is that what yeah. was happening with you, little? Yeah, you, I, you didn't feel that. Uh, I, I didn't know what was really going on and i used to be i have headaches i have a lot of migraines and sometimes i take hot baths and one night i put a curtain up over the bathroom and i went and when i was in the bathroom with my, alicia was with me my dog and boy we heard this roar by the window and i thought, oh boy he's mad now and then mm. i realized he'd been watching me take a bath what else is he going to do that after I started watching him, keeping up with him, and learning about him, I realized that they come out at sunset, and they go back in at sun in the morning. And um, this one lived underground because I went to through the pasture one day 
with a friend of mine came from Hawaii, and we were hiking all back in there where I knew he stayed. And we went through the creek and up around, and there was a tree farm and all this, and I saw these giant footprints, and then there was this big giant berm, and all trees growed up on it. It was real old, but it was big. And I went over there, and I, there was this funny-looking uh, square uh, of the the dirt had been put up in like a, a bulldozer did it, but there wasn't a bulldozer in there, and it was in a big square, like a, a triangle-shaped square. Uh, it was a square, but the dirt was pushed up in a triangle, if you get oh. that. Me, me and Chris went over there, and I looked down, and there was about 20 stats, and I said, you know what? We better get out of here, Chris. I think this is where he lives. And apparently, that's where they would come out and use the bathroom and then go back underground. So they had an area that they actually went to the bathroom. See, that's new. I've never heard that ever. You know, usually well, people look he, for scat, they can't find he, anything. You know, he didn't leave. He didn't migrate. Mm-hmm. He stayed there. And every night I could hear him in the same areas every night. That's why I knew pretty much where he hung out. Yeah. And you had said years later he had a, a son, a juvenile? Yeah, that happened one night. Gunther uh, was barking. We had a bloodhound. And um, he was barking all night, all night, all night. And so I, every time I'd go out, he'd run around, and I couldn't catch him. So woo, 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 I'd go out, and I couldn't catch him all night. So about midnight, I said, that's it. And so I turned on the porch light. Gunther was on the uh, sidewalk in front of the porch there. Turn on the light. I go outside, and I said, Gunther. What's the matter with you? What is it? And he slings his head over, and his big old ears flop, and he looks to the west. There's a driveway, a dirt driveway, about 25, about 50 feet from the house. And there, the porch light was reflecting in their eyes. And he, the Bigfoot, the big one that I had a face-to-face, was just standing there. And he had another, a younger one, like a teenager one, Standing, and they just stood there still frozen and didn't move. And I said, come on, Gunther. And Gunther come in the house and laid down. That was that. But I saw him, and I was glad to see him because I realized that there is a female around. You know what? We have, uh, you sent in a sound effect from, uh, of Gunther. Yeah. So. That's the one. So we can play that. Do you want to set it up in any way of what we're going to hear? Yeah, it was just like I was just saying, Gunther kept barking all night. And so that's when I went out and asked him what was going on. And he flung his head over and showed me where they were standing. Okay, so let's 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 take a listen. So which one was Gunther? What was was Gunther, Gunther the old? Was the screaming was Bigfoot, and Gunther was the one going. Woo, 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 woo. There's some, uh, you know, y'all sent a couple other sound effects, and let me tell you, you all, when you start hearing them, you're gonna you're gonna hear one that's gonna <laughs> it's gonna be like that one's wow, scary. yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh-uh. I know it. Oh well, you just keep trying, keep it away from me. Sears having trouble with his phone. Okay. All right. Well, Sierra, Sierra, you can come to this phone if you'd like, and we, we can talk to you. Okay. I'll tell him then. Okay. Hold on. Then okay. Can, so can hear you his phone. So it's Elaine yeah. and then yeah. her son, Sierra, and that's who we're talking with here. They had uh, they were in East Texas for 10 years, and they had a Bigfoot every night. Sierra, are you back with us? I'm here. I don't know. I just would try to jump in and talk, and it was nothing there. And I was on with you, but I couldn't jump in. All good. We got you now. You had some stories to tell us, and you were talking about how uh, your friends would all leave at a certain time, and you would be, hey, hey, stick around, be my buddy, be my pal. So your mom got a lot of looks. uh, Yeah. Right. Your mom would get a lot of looks. Female, that happens a lot. It's known for for that happening. But what were your experiences? Did you have ones that uh, didn't have anything to do with mom and you? That were just well, I don't you? know how much people are going to remember from my previous, because uh, I, I had mentioned about he would uh, snort next to the window. When I, I went to the restroom one time, and like I was standing there, and then I heard, and I thought, oh, man, come on. It sounded like a horse snorting, and it was in the horse next to the bathroom window. The bathroom window was frosted, so you couldn't see through it. 
so that that was a, that was one instance I had. And one time I was driving down the road, and there was a mirror that was uh, up against a tree. And you hear about the stories of the mirrors. What are well, those stories? I've heard, well, I've heard stories that are like concerning Bigfoot, where there's just a big mirror against a tree somewhere in the woods. And so that I thought that was pretty cool. And then I had another friend one time that I think um, I'll refer to him as uh, Harold uh, Harold Crow. Well, Harold Crow lived about 40 miles away. And one day he told me, he's like, Sierra, you got to forgive me. I got a little scared. And, like, I know it seemed, might, might seem weird to people, but, like, it's scary. And when mm-hmm. you go back to thinking about it, you get scared. And uh, he's like, you got to come over and see this, right? Well, let me grab a sip. Well, I come over there, and they got this. Uh, he lives with his family, and they had this big container that they stored dog food in. And uh, big, like, 35-pound containers of dog food. Well, he's, uh, I get over there, and the lid flipped open, and one of the big sacks of dog food was taken. Well, nobody's going to set foot on their property. And so I thought that was pretty wild. So we, he showed it to me before they did anything to it. And uh, so I go. He tells me we got to go in the back and look at the, the deer corn. And I was like, all right. I really didn't want to see it. So I go in the back, I put on shoes that he had, we walk in the woods, we go up in the back, and there was so much, I know, I'm going to go ahead and get this story out of the way, there was so much excrement there. Mm. It wasn't from no deer, it wasn't from no pigs, it, was, it looked like a herd of camels come through there. Mm. And like, it was so gnarly, we couldn't believe our eyes, and so like, yeah, he had to show me that. And uh, I thought that was really, really, really strange, because it was just, so mind blowing. Does it look human but bigger? I, you know, hate to go into the description, but uh, yeah, yeah, and it was just tons and tons and tons of where the, I guess the creature would stand there and eat, eat deer corn over and over and over again, and then like until he just got sick. That's the conclusion we come to. And mm. then, uh, then I had a friend that lived about see our, our place was like the epicenter of all these things that went went on. And I had another friend. She lived about oh. Well, truly, she lives six miles away. And so, like, I, I would go over there, and she was the one that I had mentioned a long time ago that they t- he turned their boat around in their yard. They had a little old bass boat that got spun around, and nobody was going to go out there and turn that thing around. They were playing tricks on them. And That's then typical behavior. Night. Yeah, exactly. And she was coming home one night from work about 930, and uh, she was less than two miles away from her house. And all of a sudden, she heard this this boom on her car, you know, and, and it hit it real hard from the side. So she pulls over, gets out and looks, and there was hair and, like, uh, the, a dent on her back quarter pound. She got back in her car and went home. She told me about that story. So he had, like, come up and just, like, body blocked her because it, it wasn't no pig or cow or dog or anything like that. Not, not down there where we live. Now, did you see the white one as your mom did? Yeah, see, I'm the one that we, uh, I just walked one thirty in the morning. I just flew open the front door, shut, lit up the candle power, and shined it right on his face. And that was the one where he had the yellow eyes, and his, his, he was behind the hay bales. That was, the, that was a, a previous story that I had mentioned, and his face was all, like, old and wrinkled. And, like, he's looking at me, and, like, he just lowers himself down. Like, and I thought, no, I, I didn't just see that. Mm, mm. <laughs> um, but you yeah. had a lot of incidents happen as well, right? You you saw this. Did you ever see one in the day? By the way, well, uh, it would always happen right at uh, right at dark. Right. Okay. So there's a certain time because, like, I can I can tell people so, so much, but uh, I can't tell you how to see him, but I can tell you how to hear him. How do you hear him? Well. You go, you go down, yeah. You you go down to that region, that East Texas region, which is about eleven counties down there that all consist of this this one area, and things happen in all of these counties. And if you just follow the saltwater trucks down there, and follow them down, and find you a nice uh, white rock lease road, and just pull off about six thirty at night, six fifteen and six thirty five at night, just pull off. Let that saltwater truck just go on by. And then just get out of your car, cut your car off, get out and just listen. Just listen. Because I promise you, 
You're never going to catch him. You're never going to shoot him. You're never going to trap him. But you could hear him. You might could see him with Fleur and he, he I never got a chance to try that. But uh, there's so many different things that go on with that creature. Do you think they were out to hurt you guys, or do you think that he was trying to befriend you? Or It's sad because I think this one was trying to interact with people, and it, it was sad, and I think there were times when he was sad because I would be sitting there thinking, well, he might just bust through the back door and try to have tea and, tea and toast with us. You know, you just never know, you know. And... You really don't, and that's not a strange thing to say. It is for people that have no idea and have never been around one, but you're exactly right. that That is absolutely something that they could do where they could just walk up to you and say, hey, you know, make me a sandwich as well. So until we meet again, keep watching the night skies and continue with me to seek out the strange and uncover the unknown. For Coast to Coast AM, I'm Connie Willis. Good night. The Coast Mobile app is now available for download on iPhones and Android devices. You can become an insider directly through this app. This is a great option for our international listeners and new users will also receive a free two-week trial.